Let's continue exploring the universe within art and the art behind redstone. I'm your host, Omledu, and in this video, we're going to look at how to build a super easy rotating workstation. This video was requested by Raul BPC. Thank you so much for leaving a comment and a request, so I really hope you enjoy. Now, technically, this can be used to rotate any blocks. It doesn't have to be used with workstations. We'll also go over some alternative ways to activate it, how to make it as big or as small as you want, and how to make a tileable design. So no matter if you just want a simple rotating workstation, or you want to try your hand at building a slot machine, hopefully this video will give you all of the information you will need in order to use these block rotators. The mechanics are super simple. You just have four pistons that are pushing blocks in a circular motion. Now on Bedrock, you can use pistons to move containers and entities such as furnaces and chests, but on Java, you cannot. Now even on Bedrock though, you cannot move grindstones using pistons for some reason, so you can't use those in your rotating workstations. So especially if you're playing on Java, just keep in mind what you can and cannot push with pistons. But once you hide the redstone, it will look something like this. But without further ado, let's build it. So this thing is super cheap. These are all the materials you will need to make a five block rotator. If you're playing on an earlier version and can't use or don't want to use a copper bulb, we'll also go over some alternative ways to activate it near the end of the video. The build area is going to be four by one, two blocks under the floor. So one block of air underneath the floor block. And I went ahead and dug out some extra room around our build area just to make it easier to build and easier to see. But we're gonna start off by placing a solid block on the front with a piston facing toward the back and then an observer facing toward the back. Now we're gonna place a piston facing up in front of that observer. Then we're gonna place five temporary blocks going up. Now we need to break out the block that is under the top one so that we can place a piston facing the front, then break out the next block down so that we can place an observer looking up at that piston, then switch out the bottom block for some redstone dust. Now we need another temporary block next to this top one so that we can place a piston facing down then we need an observer looking at this piston and just make sure that all of the observers are looking directly at the pistons. Then place two temporary blocks on top of that piston so that we can place an observer looking up so that the back of that observer is pointed into the piston. Now place a comparator facing the back on top of that observer, a copper bulb next to that comparator, a solid block underneath that copper bulb with a wooden button on it. That button needs to be a wooden button, not a stone button. We'll talk about why later on. But now we just need to put in our workstations or our blocks. Just make sure to leave a space on the front row. So the front row needs to have one less block than the back row. But now if we press the button, it should all just start working. Now we just need to hide all the pistons in the redstone so that you end up with something like this. Now also with the copper bulb and the wooden button, you can press it as fast as you want to and you never have to worry about it breaking. And if you want to build this at a smaller or bigger size, that is super duper easy, so let's go over how. So the smaller size, essentially, you just raise up all of this bottom part up by one block, and you get rid of that dust. So if we just raise all of this by one block from what we just built, it will function exactly the same, except that it will hold three blocks or three workstations instead of five. Or if you want to make it bigger, where it can hold more than five blocks or workstations, that is super easy as well. Just keep in mind that pistons can only push up to 12 blocks. All we have to do to expand it is simply add more observers, blocks, and redstone. So essentially, the top part stays the same, it is the bottom part that ends up changing. The top part will still have an observer looking at the topmost piston, but everything below that observer is just a series of blocks and observers and dust in order to eventually trigger this bottom piston down here. So next to that bottom piston needs to be a dust or a block. So if you need to, you can always add an observer that is looking at the back of another observer. This will extend it down by one block so that you make sure that you have either a block or a dust next to that bottom piston. But observers cannot notice changes in solid blocks, so you would need to switch out that solid block for a dust in this specific example. But also in this example, it was fine just continuing the normal pattern of observer block dust, observer block dust. Now also, at some point when you're making this taller, you will need to lower the input button. So like here, we have the observer facing to the side, so the back of that observer is still going into that piston. That way we can run the button a little bit lower. Now as for a tileable design, it is exactly the same, except that you can't use any redstone dust. So on the five block design that we tutorialed out, all we would have to do is break the dust, 
add an observer looking into the back of that observer, and stick a block coming out of the back of that, and we can now tile this as many times as we want to. One of the nice things about tiling is that you can activate them individually, or if you run dust to all of the lamps, you can activate all of the cells at the same time, like so. So this could function as a, you know, slot machine or something like that. Now, if we have it even taller, where we end up having dust on top of observers like this, all we have to do is switch out the dust with a dropper. The dropper will get activated from the solid block that is activated from the observer, and observers can notice when droppers activate. Now, this bottom section can't be a dropper or dust, so we need to add another observer down here so that we can power the block that is next to the piston. So when tiling these, you have to have a solid block next to the bottom piston because that's the only thing you can power. Now, just in case you're playing on an earlier version that doesn't have copper bulbs, or if you just don't want to use a copper bulb, there are alternatives. Like we can place a lever onto a dropper or a redstone lamp with an observer looking at that, then switch the observer in the block here on the top so that the observer is looking up and is placed on the corner with dust on top of those two blocks. Or we can just simply add a button that activates the top front piston. So either by placing a button directly on the piston or sticking the button on a block that is next to the piston, then we can just delete the entire copper bulb section and this would work too. But there are problems with these designs that the copper bulb totally fixes. So the simple button one not only is really slow, but also if you activate it too quickly, it will end up breaking the machine by pushing one of the observers completely out of the way. So you'd have to go in and fix it. And the lever version does speed it up a bit, but it still has the same problem where if you activate it too quickly, it will break. Luckily, both of these designs can be fixed simply by adding four pieces of obsidian. Since pistons cannot move obsidian, if you place one directly opposite of all four of the pistons, this will prevent it from ever breaking. Now, one problem with this is that it limits the number of blocks that you can see from the front down to one. You know, we can no longer see two of the workstations, which is kind of sad, but we could spam the input as fast as we want to, and it will never ever break. Now, using a copper bulb with a wooden button accomplishes the same thing. No matter how fast you activate the wooden button, it will never ever break. However, if you use a stone button, it can be activated too quickly and therefore will break because stone buttons activate for a less amount of time than wooden ones do. So just use a copper bulb with a wooden button and you'll never have any problems. But let me know down in the comments what you plan on using this for. Are you gonna make a single rotating workstation or are you gonna use the tileable design for something fancy? You could even use this block rotator as the visual display on a slot machine. So let me know what kind of shenanigans you are up to in your own worlds. I would love to know. But that's all we got for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, share, and subscribe, and be sure to leave a comment. Let me know what you did or didn't like, or if you have any questions or requests, I will do my best to help you out. Or if you don't know what to say, just tell me hi. I would love to hear from you. But that's all we got, so until next time, I've been your host, Amelie Du, sharing a redstone trick or two, and reminding you, as always, don't forget to have fun. Bye-bye.